In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold a square interlace bracelet designed by Michał Kosmulski. Now you'll need a strip of paper that fits around your wrist three times. So let me show you. Wrap it around once, twice, and now see here's the beginning of the strip. I'm just going to hold it so we can nicely see it. And here you can see it's quite snug around my wrist. And for me that works out to be 57.75 centimeters or 22 and 3 quarters of an inch. But I know it can be quite difficult to get long strips of paper. So in this video I'm actually going to show you how you can use two strips or even more and then just tape those together. Right now I'm showing a crease pattern and I've marked the sections where it's best to tape together multiple strips to get a long strip. And for the demonstration I'm just using two strips and they're both the same length so that I divide it into two. This strip is a bit longer, 64 centimeters, and it's 10 centimeters wide. So if you have your strip of the length that you require, you measure the length and you divide it by 6.4 and that gives you the width of the strip. That's because we need to fold a square grid with 64 divisions by 10 divisions. And that's actually the first step. But as I have two strips here, I'm actually going to fold a 10 by 32 division grid because it's a bit easier to work with. Folding a grid with 32 divisions is quite easy, but if you're unsure how to divide into 32, I have a tutorial showing you that in detail. Now once you have your strip divided into 64, or if you've got two, divided into 32, we now need to divide into 10 equal sections. And for this we're first going to fold in half lengthwise. Be sure to make this crease very precise, double checking that you're aligning edge with edge very precisely. And if you have a long strip I always find it easier to fold one side than the other side, then pull this apart and then add the crease to get it nice and straight. Now we can use the divisions we already have to get the fifths and for this I'm just going to zoom in and show you this section. Now unfold and now we're going to add diagonal creases to determine the tenths and we're going to do that so that it's part of the crease pattern for the actual bracelet. So for this I'm going to take this and count in two of these sections right here and then align this crease line with the crease line right there and this one with the crease line right here so that we have a perfect 45 degree angle. Try to be very precise here because it's going to make a big difference. Then we're going to crease down one, two, three of these sections. And then we do that in the top two. I'm just going to rotate it because I find it easier to work precisely that way. Do whatever works best for you. And again crease one, two, three down. If you want you can also add it on this end because of the crease pattern. If you have two strips here you just fold to the central crease line. It's a bit easier. And same on the other side. Now we can use these intersections to fold the ten divisions right here. And I know it's difficult to fold a straight crease on such a long length. But because you have all of these crease lines that you can align with each other, it's not as difficult. So first take one of the intersections and then make a pinch there. Be sure that you're happy with the precision. If not, adjust just a little. And then align crease line with crease line to get a nice straight crease. And if you want, you can also use the other side. Again make a pinch and especially if you're using shorter strips you can again use this technique of pulling the paper apart and then making a long straight crease. That works really well. You might need a bit of practice but I find that's a very nice and fast way to get straight creases. But of course especially if you're using one long strip it's better to always check the precision 
by aligning crease line with crease line. And then you have one section left and you can leave that as is or, like me, fold it in half. Folding the tents in this way ensures the ones in the center are very precise. Any small errors in cutting the paper move to the edge, which is good, because we only need precise squares for the pattern in the center. So now you have five divisions right here and you repeat the steps on this side and of course also for the second strip. Now once you have your grid done with 32 by 10 divisions or if you have one long strip 64 by 10 divisions, we're going to fold the crease pattern. For this we're first going to fold in half and then we have the closed edge on the bottom then we're going to count one, two, three, four, five in and then crease along there. And then we're going to fold the diagonal of a square that has a side length of three grid squares, like this. Make a strong crease through all the layers. Then also fold the diagonal of the square with two grid squares side length and then the diagonal of just that small one, again making a strong crease. Unfold and then from this corner you count one, two, three and again fold and add the next crease. Always folding the diagonals through all the layers. And continue through the whole length of the strip. And then we have our crease pattern done. Now at this point I'm going to tape these two strips together like this so you can see the two extra squares here which is the overlap to close the bracelet are on the edges and I'm going to tape and I don't want this to be visible in the finished model so I'm going to tape it on the white side and just have a little overlap to the colored side which is folded underneath. So I'm just going to take some tape and of course usually you wouldn't use tape in origami but this is just to make a longer strip and then I'm going to tape one side then flip it over and then align the two sheets nicely so that there's no real gap or overlap and hopefully the creases will align quite nicely and then I'll just fold over these remaining sections and to ensure that this tape isn't visible you should have that tape go no further than two tenths or one fifth right here so two of these rows on the grid. Okay so now we have a long strip and we're going to work ourselves from one end of the strip to the other end and we're first going to make a long mountain fold throughout. And then we're going to look at these diamond shapes. There's three and we're going to take the one in the middle and make it pop up with mountain folds. Because we have the creases in place already, it's quite easy. We just need to change the direction of some of them. And then almost automatically, these mountain folds will also pop up. Then we're going to take this and fold it in half from top to bottom. And then we're going to make this flap fold up and this long strip fold down. And then we're going to open this right here along a crease line that has two columns here next to it and on the other side it automatically opens and we have a nice square twist done. Next we're going to fold up along the pre-creasing, just having those pop up and pinching the corners. And then we want to fold this in along the crease lines of the outer diamond. So if we do that, we get this windmill shape. You can use this molecule to fold Michaus 
propeller tessellation. Now for the square interlace pattern, we're going to make an inside reverse fold along here. Using the grid line, just open the paper and push it in and flatten it down. Same here. And right there. This one I'm going to leave unfolded because we need to move on to the next molecule. So while leaving this mostly folded, I'm again going to have that middle diamond pop up in mountain folds. And then again fold in half top to bottom. And this time this flap will want to go down and that's exactly right. It's always going to go up once and then down once because these square interlace molecules will alternate between going clockwise and counterclockwise. Then again make that windmill appear and then add the inside reverse folds. And move on to the next molecule. There's 10 in total. I chose to use 10 partly because it's very easy to fold a 64 division on a strip and easy is good, right? So you will sometimes feel like the paper wants to fold this way, but always ensure that you're folding top to bottom. And then here you can see the flap again wants to go up and on the other side we will fold it down and then open up to get the next square twist done. And now really continue all the way. Now once you've collapsed all of the molecules, we're then going to make a mountain fold all along this length. Make a strong crease and same on the other side. And now you can put this underneath some heavy books overnight, but if you're as impatient as I am, I like to use an iron. So for that I simply put the model between two sheets of paper for protection and turn the iron to medium heat. And then just go over it. And then, ta-da, it's quite nice and flat. Right here it's not flat enough for my taste, so I'm just going to go over that one more time, right there. And now we can put together the bracelet. So let's take a closer look at this section right here. As you can see there are multiple layers and right on the top here you have this section right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this right in here. Can you see that? But to make it extra stable we're going to take this latch right here and put it right there. So if we unfold both of these like that, I'm just going to insert it like this all the way, and then close it up and I find that holds really nicely. Now for me, because I used quite a long strip, I can simply slip this on. But if you chose to do it a bit more snugly like I did here, what you can do is pull this apart perhaps one square so you have a bit more play and then it's easy to slip on and then you just need to push it together again. By the way, if you're wondering what paper I used for this bracelet, it's called Stardream. But you could achieve a similar effect using, for example, bronze acrylic paint on simple paper. Now your square interlace bracelet is all done. And if you like Michał Kosmulski's work, head over to his website and Flickr stream for more of it, including diagrams and crease patterns, so you can fold his other models too. And if you liked this video, do let me know by giving it a thumbs up, commenting below and sharing it with others. Plus, I highly recommend folding a matching box following another of my tutorials. Or check out my playlist of further tessellation tutorials. Finally, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next videos. I hope to see you around and as always, happy folding!